ever so empty. Usually it's packed and running down, so that's the reason they get that warning. Um, the order of business uh, for these applications will be standard. That is, the officer will give a presentation on the application. And then if there's any pub public speaking, uh, we'll take those. The officer has a chance to answer any points. And then finally, the committee members themselves ask questions and debate the, uh, and finally vote, of course, on it. This meeting tonight is being recorded by the council. So at a later date, if you've got any queries, hopefully you'll be able to uh, turn them up on the council's website. Right. Um, let's go straight to the uh, agenda. Item one, apologies for absence. We only have one apology, and that's Councillor McWilliams. And we don't have a substitution for same. So then to the minutes of the previous meeting, just to check for any errors, omissions, or anything else. That was the meeting held on the 19th of April, 2017. Any councillors commenting on? No. In which case, can I sign them as a true and correct record, please? Mm. I can. Thank you very much. Uh, declarations of interest. Any councillors are invited to declare whether they have any uh, disclosable interests. Councillor Fairley. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to declare a non-pecuniary interest in item A1, and we'll leave the room for this and the fact that our families are related to the farm owners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Everett. I'd like to declare a non-pecuniary interest in item A5. I live in the ward that it is situated in and have a number of customers on that estate. However, that would not make any difference to the way that I look at that um, in terms of determining the application. Thank you very much. Nothing further then. Tonight is a uh, a special night in one sense. Um, I'm going to ask councillor, a uh, councillor, I'm sorry we've downgraded him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you might say upgraded him. Ca uh, Mr. Guyver, if he will uh, read it out, just for your information, it is about the five year supply and is on the copy of the green paper. I think, has everybody got a copy in front of them? However, Mr Guyver. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, councillors. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, delighted to uh, uh, present to you that the council can now demonstrate a five-year supply of deliverable housing sites, which is a key requirement of national planning policy. And as members will know, over the last few months and years, uh, if you cannot identify a five-year supply, then you are vulnerable uh, to planning applications for housing and expected to approve applications for housing, even if they are contrary to local policies, as long as you apply the presumption in favour of sustainable development. Uh, we're no long longer caught by that. Uh, last year, the last financial year, there was a bumper increase in housing development, uh, 658 completions, uh, which is 100 more than we were expecting, uh, which has helped the housing supply situation and a significant increase in the number of sites gaining planning permission, particularly on smaller sites, uh, which has increased the supply side of the calculation. So by the calculations on your green sheet, we can currently demonstrate a 5.1 year supply. The planning inspectorate have been notified of that because we have appeals in the system notably Centenary Way uh, in Clacton, which will be on the 24th of May. Uh, so the planning inspector have been notified that now we believe we have a five-year supply. Naturally, people will try and challenge this, uh, but officers are quite confident that we can defend this as a robust uh, figure. Thank you very much. This is a... Uh, it's a mark on the calendar for this one, I'm very pleased to say. Right, in that case we move on to item A1, 
which is Planning Application 170377. This is a full application, um, and you'll find it on pages 9 to 14 on your agenda. Straight away back to Mr Garvey. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this application, along with the second application before you tonight, uh, are effectively a package because the, the idea is that uh, Green Speed, uh, the vehicle body repairs and paint spraying business in Wenlock Road, uh, are looking to relocate to Unit 1 Norwood Lodge, which is the application we're talking about here. Uh, and in the second application up tonight uh, will be uh, a proposal for dwellings on the existing site in Wenlock Road. So it's a two-parter, if you like. The first part is where the business wants to locate to, and the second part will be what they intend to do with their existing site. So here is the, uh, the site shown in the red line, uh, which is one of the Nissan huts, huts within the complex of agricultural and business units uh, here at Norwood Lodge. Uh, it's registered there as Wheelie, but it, I'm informed it in fact straddles the, the boundary and is in fact in St Osif Parish. Uh, Norwood Lodge is the residential property in the middle of the uh, complex. It's uh, not a listed building, uh, but quite a substantial uh, building in that location. Here is aerial photograph showing the location of the site, uh, down Bentley Road, the existing access to be used. There are two Nissan huts. It's the one that I'm circling here, which is to be uh, used for the, uh, the business. But you'll also see that there are other uh, buildings associated with agriculture and business in the location. Uh, and between the Nissan hut and the property, uh, there are buildings between. They're not directly between, uh, but they are within the context of that scheme. There are other large buildings on the side. You would have seen the strong conifer, a uh, row of conifers along the, the southern edge there as well. And then moving on to some photographs. So we're talking about the first of the Nissan huts in this range. The conifer hedge. And there's a condition to be uh, imposed to maintain that hedge and uh, uh, keep it at a minimum three metres in height and to replace any plants that die within the next five years. To maintain that, uh, connect the distinction between the complex and the open countryside beyond. The existing building there has a uh, lawful B8 use, which is warehouse distribution use. Here are the, the front doors of the unit. And the idea is to retain the unit in situ but make some modifications to it to allow the green speed business to locate to there. And they include new doors, which I'll show you in a second, but also includes the creation of a, a storage and vehicle uh, parking area, uh, customer parking to the north of the hut there. And if we look now at the plan, you see the workshop would be incorporated into the front part of the hut uh, and to the rear would be the sort of administration end of it with the staff toilet and office. Here are the elevations. Currently uh, on the back end of the Nissan hut there is no door but if they're creating the, the office area uh, this would be a, a secure uh, door uh, and there would be a, a door on the inside as well, a normal door, and then more of a security door here. But otherwise, the, no structural changes really to the, the building itself. The recommendation uh, for this is approval. Uh, we have policies in both the adopted and merging local plan that actually support the use of rural buildings for business. 
uh, one of the critical elements of the recommendation was that the recommendation is approval so long as uh, there is no objection from environmental health about the potential impacts of noise and fumes from the use. Uh, we do have confirmation now from environmental health that there is no objection, so that element has been dealt with. If I take you to the, uh, the planning conditions that are suggested, uh, which are on page 10, you have there the standard three-year time limit, uh, we have the approval of the, the plans that I've just shown you on how to use the building. Uh, to not allow the business to expand beyond uh, the boundary of the site. Uh, to retain the conifer screen, as mentioned before, at a minimum height. And to require replanting, if need be, within five years. And the submission of any details of any external lighting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, one thing I would ask you before I start the public speaking is um, it's going from B8, or it's suggested it goes from B8 to B2. Now, the, the, uh, in B2, there was quite specific uh, definitions of lighting. It said no external lighting or security lighting. Now, would that be, are we intending that that should be uh, carried through onto the B8? Um, I would have thought that for the security of the site, it might be necessary for some external lighting. I'll leave that with you to have a think about, if you like, and then if there's any other questions that members do. Now, I don't have a member of the public to speak, either for or against it. The uh, St. Joseph Parish um, have made no recommendations. They're happy with it. The ward councillor um, is not speaking on it, and the applicant or agent, um, I think Miss, the owner's probably going to speak. Give him a chance. Mr. Green, is that... Uh, are you caring to speak? Right. If you'll come forward, sir, and uh, get yourself established, and you have three minutes to uh, add anything that uh, you wish to. I'll just confirm that um, this basically covers both the applications. So, good evening, members. Uh, my name is Alan Green, and along with my brother is sitting behind me, we have been in business on our Wenlock Road site for more than 40 years, trading as green speed. Our business involves vehicle body repairs, restoration, and painting of both private and company vehicles. We principally serve the tendering district, but we also carry out work for customers far afield. Um, we regularly carry out vehicle body work repairs for tendering district council and culture to borough council, as well as le several um, local businesses. We are proud of our successful record over the years and now find that our current premises is really holding us back. In terms of expansion and the ability to make the use of the latest techniques, paint and bodywork. For some time we have been seeking new premises where we can install this latest equipment and be more efficient, take on more work and allow the business to grow including new staff. We currently have a, an apprentice scheme running and this will be expanded if we go into the new premises. We've begun putting our premises up for sale after two years of marketing um, and we received no offers. There was no interest. In order to move the fund and to fund the new workshop, we needed the revenue from this existing site. Our unsuccessful marketing efforts meant that we were unable to read the funds and we needed another plan. Uh, approximately 18 months ago, we met with, with Mr. Gary Guyver and discussed the, policy, uh, the possibility of housing on our site. Gary advised that providing the scheme was modest and linked to an alternative site, there may be officer support for our proposal. Our housing scheme is modest I know you've been today and had a look round, so you've probably got a feel for it. It is effectively a replacement dwelling 
for the existing house and uh, two houses for, in exchange for the workshops. Our application has been made alongside the proposal to change the use of um, the employment building at nearby Norwood Lodge, which we've just discussed, you've just discussed. We hope that Norwood Lodge will be our new base. Um, both plan applications before you this evening, as you know, are being recommended for approval. Our proposals have been prepared with officers' advice, and the housing development proposed at Wenlock Road has not met with any objections from our neighbours or the parish council, and the Norwood Lodge application is also supported, as you do know now, by the environmental health officers. We firmly believe that the approval of both applications will positively will have a positively sorry of both applications will be a positive decision for all concerned. It will reduce traffic in Wenlock Road, allowing it to be entirely residential. The road will terminate with houses um, and the, in similar character to those of their neighbours, rather than a less attractive commercial development. Approval will also allow the business to increase its workload capacity, employ more staff, and provide investment in new and modern, greener equipment. On behalf of the company, I respectfully request that you approve these applications as recommended by your professional officers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Green. You have uh, overrun your three minutes, but... Uh, I think you've actually covered both applications, so I think uh, <coughs> that is uh, quite permissible. Um, right, now then, uh, it's back to the officer now for any comments further. <coughs> yes, the only comment, I neglected to uh, uh, draw you to the, the green sheet uh, update where an additional condition is recommended there to restrict working hours. Uh, to 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays, uh, with no working on Sundays or public holidays. Uh, that condition uh, is a necessary one, bearing in mind that, as you mentioned before, uh, Councillor White, the previous consent would have had that kind of condition, albeit not necessarily the same hours. And coming back on the point that you made earlier about uh, lighting, uh, for this use where you are talking about uh, working on uh, potentially expensive vehicles that might be stored there overnight. I think there is a, a need to uh, consider the need for security lighting, certainly, and details of that would be requested as a requirement of the condition to ensure that they are sympathetic, don't cause a, a hazard to nearby occupiers, uh, and uh, the simple things like... Uh, not being like pollution on the countryside and detracting from the ecological value of any nearby assets as well. Thank you very much. Councillors, to you now, Thank Councillor you. Baker. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just going on from that, the <coughs> original conditions that were granted in 2004, where it says no external flood or security, light, security lighting, I'm presuming that was for the whole of that site. So any conditions that are imposed now with regard to lighting, movement, um, hours of working would only apply to this particular part of the whole area. Does that make sense? Yeah. The, the extent of the previous permission, I don't know off the top of my, my head, but these conditions that we're suggesting here uh, would apply to the building uh, that's shown there on the plan only. Right, further questions? Yes, Councillor Benison. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, there were just, I had one little query this morning, but I think it's been explained away now. Can we go back to the aerial shot? because we thought it was going to be closer to uh, Nord House than it actually is, because there's a, a chimney just at the other side of that low conifer hedge. Um, 
bit further down, uh, no, further up, up a bit, up a bit, left, <laughs> left, stop, stop, <laughs> no, <laughs> where you were. Um, and it looked as though Nord House was a lot closer to the boundary than it actually is. So that chimney must have been on one of the outbuildings, chimney we saw this morning, because it looked as though it was very close. Is that the case? I mean, you, you will be more familiar with this site than I am, I think. But the, what I do know from uh, the, the officer's report is that the, the distance between Norwood Lodge and the building that is proposed for this use is 87 metres. And you can see from the aerial photograph uh, that although there is sort of <laughs> there's uninterrupted between the two, there are a variety of buildings on the site. That one. Yeah, that's the one. I'm glad you did that. That's a pretty dense hedge, that. Uh, it's dense conifers. So we can't see nothing of the, the house anyway. No. Right. Uh, Councillor Haney? Um, I'd like just to say if they do have lighting, can they make sure they're down lighters so the lighting doesn't go up, it goes down? If everybody agrees with that. And I was slightly um, worried about the hours of working. What hours do they have now? Do you know? Because they're very long hours and they all start at, was it 7 and 7, 7.30? You know, somebody might like a bit of a lion because I suspect it's supposed to be a lot of banging and crashing. I don't know whether those are normal working hours for a business like this or usually they're not, don't open, do it so early on a, on a Saturday, more like 8 or something like that. It's only a guesstimate but the yeah. present of the owner lives on site at the present moment and yes, he, I, I know he <laughs> has a lot of customers that do come in early, leave their car and then go off to work. Yeah, so. oh, that, it's just on the Saturday I was talking about, not, 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 um, not um, in the week. Yeah, I suppose that's the long hours for the customers ah. to pick up their cars. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is that a normal hours? Are those normal hours for this sort of business? Sorry. If I take the first one uh, about down lighting, what we'll probably do is have that as an informative uh, with the decision if we're mindful okay. to approve because obviously uh, the detail of it will come in for uh, uh, approval at a later date if need be. Uh, in terms of existing hours, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that the, uh, the hours that are suggested here within the condition uh, have been discussed with the applicant and fit with the, uh, the business model that they are proposing to operate from that site. Councillor Everett. Um, I wonder if you could put the, um, the aerial plan back up again, that one. Yep, thank you. Um, sorry, actually, there's another one that's, that shows the storage area. Yeah, that's it, thanks. Um, the staff parking and vehicle storage area, um, as it's situated on there, would seem acceptable to me, but it wouldn't be if it extended further than the line of conifers, because it would then be seen um, from other areas. Are we sure that um, any vehicle storage um, wouldn't extend beyond that conifer line? Uh, yes, uh, we can ensure that and enforce against that. Uh, and one of the conditions uh, actually suggested is to ensure that the use is maintained within the line that's shown. Uh, so there should be no breaches of that conifer line by the operations of this business. Councillor Baker. Chairman, I would suggest and um, propose that we go with the officer's recommendation and approve the application. I'll second it. I have a proposer, I have a seconder. Any further comments before I take the vote? Can they just put the informative about the downlighters on? Yes. <laughs> just ask uh, Mr. Guyver what the informative would be if we're going to add it. It's okay. I mean, the informative would be 
uh, that in discharging the condition relating to external lighting, the committee has expressed a preference for lighting to be down lighting to minimise light pollution and other uh, nuisance that might be caused. Thank you. Proposer and second are happy with that. Anyhow, in that case, those in favour, please show. It is unanimous. That is agreed. If you would, please, yes. If when we get on to the singer and the one, I'd like to speak first. I'm not going to bang on, I'm not going to be aggressive. I'm just Right, we move on to A2, which is agenda item 5. That is the, uh, it starts on page 15. It is planning application 17, oblique 00381. And already we've been talking about it. It is in Wenlock Greenspeed in Wenlock Road, Wheeling. Straight to Mr Guyver. Thank you. So this is an outline application, so we're looking to agree the principle of the, the three detached dwellings rather than necessarily detailed design. That would come at a later stage. Uh, so this is effectively part two of the package, uh, the green speed package, which is what happens to the existing site uh, from which they operate in Wenlock Road, uh, which is firmly within Wheelie. Uh, here is uh, Wenlock Road off of Bentley Road, so it's just literally up the road, uh, the other side of the bypass from the proposed site. Uh, currently on the site, uh, you will see, when I show you the photographs, the, uh, the residential property that is on there, uh, which is owned by the, uh, the owners of the business, and the business buildings themselves the, from which the current business operates. It's a 0.3 hectare site. Uh, part of the site is occupied by the buildings, part of the site is, has no buildings on uh, and all of the vegetation really associated with it are around the perimeter of the site. Further to the north uh, is Roxborough Road and members may recall that we've had a number of planning applications for dwellings in uh, Roxborough Road uh, to the north. So that is the effectively the distance from the site to the settlement development boundary. Uh, the site is outside uh, and clear of the settlement boundary. Uh, but given that this is an exceptional package of measures aimed to uh, relocate this business and keep it within the district to a more uh, appropriate premises, even though it's outside the settlement boundary and we can now identify a five-year supply, uh, we are still looking to support this scheme. Here's the close-up of the existing block plan, again showing the, the buildings and the undeveloped area of the site. A photograph, panoramic, showing the business unit. There's another business unit to the side and the existing residential property that would be lost to this development. Here we are looking south out towards the open countryside uh, and the operational area of the business where they have uh, storage and parking. This is looking out uh, towards over the undeveloped area which is used occasionally for overspill parking associated with the business. And these uh, substantial trees I understand include oaks And another view out towards <coughs> over the open countryside to the east with the sort of Roxborough Road area just visible to the north there. This is looking back along Wenlock Road, a uh, substantially extended property here, Green Acres, which is next to the site. Only 21 metres uh, between uh, the dwelling and the business, whereas, of course, 
from the new site they're moving to, it would be 87 metres between the business and the nearest dwelling. This is the indicative layout. Uh, it's outlined, remember, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like this, uh, but this is useful to show how roughly three dwellings could be accommodated onto the site, uh, with two on the northern portion where the current business is, and one to the south. So the considerations that have had to be taken into account here, uh, obviously it's outside the settlement boundary, but I've explained that we feel even with a five-year supply, there are exceptional circumstances that warrant supporting this scheme. Uh, our own regeneration team has worked closely with the business uh, to explore the opportunity uh, for them to relocate and to expand. And this development will help to facilitate that. There is a condition suggested uh, within here which would prevent any of the new properties being occupied until the business was relocated and operational in its new premises. Uh, there's also conditions related to contamination. Obviously, we would have to ensure that the site is remediated because there's been chemicals, paints used on the existing site. Uh, there would need to be a uh, demolition method statement is one of the conditions as well. And the tree officer here has noted that there are, within the site, uh, obviously on the boundary of the site you have the oaks, but within the site, the best view of it, I think. Oh, I don't get a good view of it, but between the property and the, uh, and the business, there are some conifers actually embedded within the site, which the, uh, the tree officer has noted, but has, has uh, recommended that they're not of sufficient merit to actually retain them within the scheme. But they still require a tree survey as a condition to just ensure that the good trees that are on and around the site are protected. Uh, you will see that Wheelie Parish Council uh, does not object to the application, but there are concerns uh, that during the construction phase there may be damage to the unadopted road uh, during the construction phase and a request there to ensure that uh, the road is left in the condition that it is at the moment after the construction takes place and that's the kind of thing that we would look through in the construction uh, method statement uh, to ensure that they're not left with a destroyed private road there. In all other respects, the scheme is considered uh, appropriate for the location uh, and it's recommended for approval in principle with reserve matters to come at a later stage and subject to the conditions that are listed in your report. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now again, I don't have anybody for, uh, from the public to speak, and the parish representative is not here, a ward member is not here, and Mr Green, would you agree that you have covered all the subjects that you wanted in this one? Councillor Fairley wasn't here for the first item. I know, Councillor Fairley wasn't in the room. Could, would you care, Mr Green, just to come and outline this bit of the building, if you could, again. It's only fair that uh, every member of the committee do hear your... Uh, I'll try and be under three minutes at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it only took me 2.45 at home. I can't work that one out. <laughs> I must have made too many mistakes. So especially for you, Mrs Fairley. Uh, good evening. My name's Alan Green, and along my brother Martin, who, um, who has been in business with me at our Wenlock site for more than 40 years trading as Greenspeed. Our business involves vehicle body repairs and restoration, painting the both private and company vehicles. Uh, we principally serve the tendering district, but also we carry out work for customers much further afield. We regularly carry out vehicle body repairs for tendering district council and Colchester Borough Council, as well as for many local businesses. We are proud of our successful record over the years, but now find that our current premises are holding us back in terms of expansion 
and the ability to make the use of the latest paint and body shop techniques. For some time we have been seeking new premises we, uh, where we can install the latest equipment, be more efficient, take more work on and allow the business to grow including adding new staff. Well, we currently run an apprentice scheme and we will be expanding that in the new premises. We began by putting our premises up for sale and after two years of marketing we received no offers. In order to move and to fund the new workshop we need the revenue from our existing site. Our unsuccessful marketing efforts mean that we were unable to raise the funds and we had to make another plan. Approximately 18 months ago we met with Mr Gary Guyver and we discussed the possibility of housing on our site. Gary advised us that providing the scheme was modest and linked to an alternative site there may be officer support for the proposal. Our housing scheme is modest, it is effectively a replacement dwelling for the existing house and the site of two houses for the existing workshops as has been explained. Our application has been made alongside a proposal to change the use of Norwood Lodge, as you know. We hope that Norwood Lodge will be our new boast. Both planning applications before you, as you now know, have both been recommended for approval. Our proposals have been prepared with officers of vice and the housing development proposed at Wemlock Road will meet with no objection from our neighbours or the parish council. Um, Norwich, and, and you also now know that Nor uh, Norwood Lodge is approved by environmental health. We firmly believe that both appro uh, approval of both applications will be a positive decision for all concerned. It will reduce the traffic in Wenlock Road, allowing it to be entirely residential. The road will be terminate with houses in similar character to those of its neighbours, rather than the less attractive commercial development, which we've tried to keep tidy over the years. Um, approval will also allow the business to increase its workload capacity employ more staff and provide investment in new and modern greener equipment, forgive the pun. On behalf of the company, I respectfully request that you approve our applications, which we now know you have one, as recommended by your professional officers. So especially for you, thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, anything to add? No. Uh, I'll start my questioning then. I notice one of the conditions that is suggested um, was that no occupation of any dwellings until relocation of the business to that approved under the previous application has been completed. Um, this morning we were told that um, the company was hoping to uh, be able to at least sell off the property on the, the field side to get that building underway as part funding for the move for the new expensive equipment. Um, does that mean that um, I, 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 we could still sell it and possibly building could start as long as nothing was occupied? Is that the way to, to read that particular clause? That's right. It would be the occupation of any of these three dwellings which would be uh, prevented before the business is relocated. I don't know what arrangements uh, the owners have made in terms of whether they're looking to build the houses themselves or whether they're looking to uh, uh, transfer the site without line permission to another developer. Uh, but the purpose of this condition is that none of them can be occupied. Development could start but they can't be occupied until the business is relocated on the alternative site. Good. Further questions, colleagues? I would, I yes, Kathleen. Um, I would like, and what happens, I notice when these, a lot of these private roads are used, built over, often the developers, builders damage them, and I would like a condition put in, if possible, that if the builders damage the road, or developers damage the road, they should repair it. Is that possible? What I would suggest is that, and it's not listed on there in the moment, what I would suggest is that it has demolition method statement, uh, but we put in a, a construction method statement as well, and we could include as part of the condition details of how the condition of the road will be 
uh, retained yeah. uh, following construction. I think that's probably the, the best way to deal with that. Thank you. Further points? Yes. Councillor Fairley. Thank you. Within the conditions, it says about a tree survey being done. Under what circumstances would that tree survey have a negative effect if um, approval was given tonight? Thank you. Well, I think it's, it's going to be more imperative for when we come to the detailed design of the dwellings. At the moment, we have an indicative proposal which would tend to suggest that uh, the trees and hedges around the perimeter of the site can all be retained with plenty of space for the roots to, to grow. But of course, if the proposal comes back any different from that, that might not necessarily be the case. Uh, so as long as it's accompanied uh, with a tree survey uh, so that we can actually double check what the impact could be then that might inform what decision we take at the next stage but based on what's been submitted so far uh, myself and the tree officer are relatively relatively confident there shouldn't be an issue but it's an extra level of protection good and sorry for again yes Okay. One more, one more. Um, in relation to the condition there, number seven, remove permitted development rights for the boundary treatments and outbuildings, um, I take it that that would include any garages, etc., that may be built as part of perhaps the end plan for the development? Well, the, the garages uh, <coughs> would quite possibly be part of the detailed plan that would come forward for our approval. Uh, what the restriction these, these development rights would do is once they are in place and occupied, it would stop people from putting other buildings in the gardens, putting up big fences around the perimeter. And that's really because this is a rural location uh, where if there's no control over what could go into that area, it could have a detrimental impact on the wider character of the countryside. So that's really what it's designed to control. Uh, any garages, uh, I would expect, would be part of the detailed planning application when that comes in. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Chairman. Just to go on from that, then, um, if we're removing the permitted development rights for the boundaries and outbuildings, would we be justified in doing them for the properties as well so they don't, say, stick an extension on the larger one, shall we say, so that it becomes... Um, out of place, would we be justified in asking for that as a, as a, to extend the, the permitted development rights so they can't extend in the future? I think we might struggle to justify why we were concerned about that, particularly with the boundary treatments, which affect the very exterior edge of the site, which would be prominent from the wider countryside. I think there would be a concern there. And also placing buildings in random locations around the edge of the site as well. Uh, might cause concerns about the impact on the, uh, the character of the countryside. But in terms of the dwellings themselves, you would think that any future extensions would be, well, extensions to where the dwellings are positioned. And the dwellings are to be positioned in a location which causes the, the least amount of impact on the, the wider countryside. So I understand the point, but it's, it's not something I would suggest for this particular scheme. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm just going to just backtrack a minute, if I may, back to the informative, I believe, that Councillor Heaney brought up regarding the um, unadopted road. And I'll just, I'll just go back to 5.3, um, the second sentence, unfortunately, in this, uh, this is the case for private roads, and it would be unreasonable in planning terms to require the applicant to fund the repair. Well, I should imagine that that, that road's going to take quite a hammering. And, 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 and if that's just an informative, it's not hardly enforceable, is it? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, please. Uh, I mean, the suggestion I made is really to ensure that uh, as part of the construction phase, uh, the road, the, the condition of the road is not reduced uh, below the level it is at the moment. I'm not suggesting that they should resurface the full length of Wenlock Road to an adoptable standard, for example. That's taking it to the extreme. But certainly if, they've, uh, if there's a risk that that road is going to be left as a bit of a 
bomb site with potholes all over the place as a result of the development, uh, then I think it's only right that we should include uh, some clause within the construction method statement that requires that to be looked at at the end of the process. Right, no further questions? Then I look to you, Councillor Baker. As before, Chairman, I um, think we should go with the officer's recommendation and approve. With the informative again, and I have a seconder in Councillor Fairley. No further points of debate. In that case, I put it to you that uh, we go along with the, re the uh, recommendations as written on the top of page 17 with the advice as well. Those in favour, please show. Again, that is approved and it is unanimous. Thank you very much. Now we go on to <coughs> A3, which is planning application 170172, which is a detailed plan, having previously granted an outline plan, land east of Bentley Road, Wheelie. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, these two ap next applications relate to detailed um, applications uh, following the granting of outline permission by members approximately a year ago. So this application is for the, the detailed design uh, details of six dwellings on the land on the eastern side of Bentley Road within Wheelie Heath. So it's the application site outlined in red, southeastern side of Bentley Road. Opposite the site is residential development, two two-storey properties and then largely bungalows to the south. To the south-west of the site is a, is a bungalow and to the north is a commercial premises. You can see from the aerial photo, the land to the south is in agricultural use. This area has been left as uh, amenity grassland, I would say. Uh, the draft settlement boundary um, shows the site within the, uh, the, the, the settlement boundary area. This is a view of the, the photograph of the, the, the site frontage. You can see there's a, there's a, a fairly patchy hedgerow to the, to the front. This is a photograph of the south, southwestern boundary um, with the acres, which is a heavily extended bungalow. The boundary is marked by a, a two metre high hedgerow. There's a view looking northeast across the site, so the, the rear of the property is in Clacton Road. This is a photograph looking back northward along Bentley Road. So you can see the two-storey properties and the bungalows sitting opposite the site. This is a view of the northeastern boundary. There's a large conifer hedge on there, which screens the commercial premises to the rear. And these are the two dwellings, two-storey dwellings on the opposite side of Bentley Road, which sit directly opposite the site. And these are the bungalows further towards the south. So the proposal is, as I said, six, six dwellings, um, largely in the linear formation which was shown at outline stage. The proposal is for four three-bed semi-detached dwellings and two four-bed properties, each with gardens measuring over 100 square metres, with parking to the front driveway areas, a minimum of two parking spaces each, central access onto Bentley Road with a replanted hedgerow set behind the visibility displays, which was agreed at outline stage as part of the, the tree and hedgerow protection methods. To the rear of the site, additional hedgerow plantings being installed behind a post and rail fence, which will provide a soft uh, elevation to the open countryside to the rear. In terms of the house designs, there's uh, a three different designs. This is the elevations and floor plans of plot one, which is the the dwelling to the furthest south, next to the acres. It's a traditional property, four bedroom with an integral garage, with dormers to the roof space, and a mixture of brick and tiles to the roof. 
the lower level garage element is the, the element which sits adjacent to the neighbour's property. This is the elevation floor plans to plot two, which is again a traditional two-storey property with a, a clad projecting gable element, which is likely to be black weatherboarding. Details are to be agreed at condition stage, which will again be sympathetic to the rural character. And these are the plans of the semi-detached properties, which will be half clad and brickwork to the, to the lower half. The gable element will be suspended, so it provides a, a traditional rural feature to those properties. Again, the garage is a fairly traditional pitched roof prop, uh, garages, which will serve the dwellings set behind a, a, an ample spaced driveway. So in terms of the merits, as I previously stated, the principle uh, was established in 2006 with the outline planning permission, which showed largely similar outline um, and layout with a single point of access. Um, in terms of the landscaping, it's considered to be acceptable. Uh, we've, we've been in discussions with the tree officer who's shown that post and rail fencing with native species, hedgerow planting will be an acceptable elevation to the open countryside with a strengthened or replanted hedgerow to the frontage onto Bentley Road. So in terms of the massing, the spacing, the scale and design of the properties, it's considered to be sympathetic to the character of the area. And in terms of residential amenities, this property which sits next to the heavily extended bungalow wouldn't cause any harm to the outlook light received by that property, given that there's no windows on that side elevation and it's facing northwards, so that elevation receives little light in any case. The position of the access sits directly opposite the boundary wall of the, the two-storey property. So in terms of residential amenity issues from users of the access, it's not considered to cause any harm in that, in that respect. Essex County Council Highways largely replicate what they stated before, and they're happy with the, the visibility displays, the width of the access, and the parking and turning areas. So the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. I don't have a single person wishing to speak on this particular application. So uh, it's straight over, councillors, for your decision. Questions to start with? Yes, Councillor Everett. Question regarding the lighting scheme. I, I noticed that um, bat and bird boxes um, are included within the plans to encourage the ecological uh, situation. Um, is the lighting commensurate with that so that it doesn't disturb bats that would be within those bat boxes? Thank you. Um, on the outline permission, there's a condition regarding the lighting. So that will be submitted to, to the council to, to assess at later stage. Um, so we will ensure that that is commensurate and um, adheres to what was agreed in the ecological statement at outline stage. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Fairley. Could we just go back to the aerial photo for a moment? And could you just repeat what you said oh, within your me. report? you in relation to you said amenity grassland yes the the area of land which the application site falls within is is classed as amenity grassland so it's an area of land which hasn't been under agricultural use it's been left to as grass basically okay further points No? Yes, Councillor Bellison. Um, going back to Councillor Fairley's um, observation, is there any, any other amenity land in um, proximity to this, this development or these um, current housing houses? I think I'll just clarify, it's not public open space, it's not amenity land for the public, it's just an area of agricultural land which has been left and it's, it's classed as grassland amenity, yeah. So. Nothing further? No, f uh, Councillor Baker. Since it's going to be all night, I recommend we go with the officer's re recommendation for approval. Okay. 
Councillor Benison will second. All right. No further points. In which case, I put it to you that uh, we approve on the lines as spelt out and the officer's recommendation on page 26. Those in favour, please show. Again, unanimous. Thank you very much. All right. Still in the parish of Wheelie, we move to. Uh, now, the next piece of land to the west of Rectory Road uh, in Wheelie Heath and it's planning application 170018. And again, this is the detailed uh, application following us approving previously the outline. Right, Mr. Lane. Thank you, Chairman. Yep, so again, this is very similar to the previous application. It's the same developer and again, members approved outline approval. Um, about a year ago, May last year. So this is land to the west of Wec Rectory Road. It can also be described as land to the south of Mill Lane, which is probably more accurate, given that's where the access will be obtained from. So the site forms an area, again, of agricultural land to the south of Mill Lane. Mill Lane is characterised by two-storey chalet bungalows and single-storey properties as well. You can see from the aerial photo there, agricultural land, and there's a piggery, ex-piggery, which has also been granted planned permission for redevelopment. Again, the site's been included within the draft settlement boundary for Wheelie Heath. It's a photo of the site frontage, which shows a, a mature hedgerow along the frontage, which is proposed now to be retained, apart from two access points to serve the development. You can see the properties on the opposite side of Mill Lane are largely bungalows. There's some two-storey chalet-style properties further to the north. There's a view from within the, the plot looking towards the rear of the hedge. This is a view at the eastern corner of the site looking down Rectory Road, which shows a, a mixture of two-storey and bungalow properties varying in design and age. This is a photograph looking south along the eastern side of the site which shows a again a, a mature hedgerow running along Rectory Road. So again the, the layout is similar to the indicative plans showing at outline stage, traditional linear style development, six four bedroom detached properties this time, served by two access points. A degree of planting to the rear behind again a post and rail fence to provide softening views along Rectory Road from the south. The hedgerow is going to be strengthened to its rear by additional native species, species hedgerow planting and a small area to the eastern corner which is open is going to be further planted to, to, to plug that gap so, uh, as, as, as can be said. Again, the style of the property is, is fairly similar to before. These are the properties at each end of the, the, the arrangement. Again, an integral garage, a lower set element brick built with tiles to the roof and dormers to the front of the garage. These are the two inside plots, two and five, which are traditional bay windowed property with a front entrance door, traditional pitched roof style property with a clad rear projecting element. And the two central plots are again, similar to the previous application with the, the, the clad weatherboard style projecting gable to the front. And each property will be served by a double garage, which is again traditional in appearance, pitched roof. So the merits, as, as before, the principle of six dwellings was approved under outline in 2016. Uh, it's considered the mass in, again, scale and siting and design of the properties is acceptable and sympathetic to the character of the area. The variation in the designs and the mixture in the use of materials and chimneys and bay windows adds interest. Um, in terms of residential amenities, there's no residential properties immediately adjacent to the western boundary, and again, the eastern boundary. To the north, there's sufficient space in between the dwellings not to cause any residential amenity concerns to arise. The position of the accesses has been considered. This access will face a brick wall which serves the corner plot to Rectory Road, and this access will 
face between two dwellings that face onto Mill Lane. So there's no real harm considered to be from the vehicle movements from those accesses. So highways are ex um, have no objections. The principle of two access points was largely agreed at outline stage. And the garden sizes are 100 square metres and in excess. And each property will be served with over two parking spaces each. So from a landscaping and highways point of view, it ticks the boxes. So the application, again, is recommended for approval. From an ecological point of view, the hedgerow is to be retained with bird and bat boxes installed to that to provide added biodiversity credentials to the site. So as I said, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, again, I don't have any speakers, ward councillors, parish councillors, or members of the public, and the applicant or his agent are not here, so in that case, it's straight to you, councillors. Questions? Curly. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Curly. Thank you. Um, page 37, 5.1, uh, Wheelie Parish Council had no additional comments to make, but they were speaking about the hedgerow there, as much as possible should be retained, and the revised plans remain ambiguous. Um, we checked on site during the site visit that these were the revised plans we were looking at. Do you know in what respect the remain ambiguous relates to, please? Thank you. I think that was largely in respect to the, the visibility displays, um, which have been included. So the visibility displays are 2.4, extending it's, it's quite a detailed plan but you can see that the visibility displays would sit clear of the hedgerow there may be a slight trimming of the front of the hedgerow but the visibility displays would sit 2.4 back and then extend to the east and west so the main majority of the hedge apart from a slight trimming to the front and the two access points will be retained with additional planting to its rear to strengthen the hedge and the second one Thank you. So in relation to that then, um, as work is progressing, what do we have in place to check that more of the hedge, for example, isn't removed than we would expect? On the outline approval, there's a condition which... Rest the, the outline approval actually adheres the, the development to the hedge row protection plan, which was in, apply, in, submitted at outline stage. So... If they deviate from that hedgerow plan, then there's a breach of planning control which can be actioned. Right. Benson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, in 6.11 on page 39, um, the last um, sentence in that paragraph uh, talks of the brick plinths, gable ends, chimneys and detail above the entrance door and windows giving the dwellings added interest. Is that something that we can come back to check has been done um, with the uh, buildings? Yes, thank you. Um, there's a condition which says they have to be built in accordance with the approved plans. So if they're not constructed correctly and the detailing hasn't been installed, then they're in breach of that condition and we can take enforcement action if need be. Further points? No, then do I get a proposition from somebody? Councillor Fairley. I recommend approval. Seconded. Seconded, Councillor Heaney. Um, and you're now voting on the recommendation as outlined in on page 34. Those in favour, please show. Again, that is approved and unanimously. Right, we now move on to planning application. 1700502. This is a full application and uh, it, it starts on page 41. It's in Whittenwood Road, Frinton. 
Mr Gulliver. Thank you very much. This is quite unusual. You don't get many of these uh, coming up. But this is a case where uh, the proposal we're being asked to judge has actually been constructed, is there, and is occupied. Uh, it's part of the Whitton Road, Wood Road uh, development, uh, which is shown there. It's the section shown in the red, the two properties that immediately front Whitton Wood Road, which you would have seen on site and the rest of the development that extends further back into the former waterworks site uh, is constructed also. That's what was there uh, when it was merely a local plan allocation. And this is the, uh, the semi-detached properties that we're talking about. This is actual photograph of what is there. Uh, you can see uh, the historic development to the left there, and the new development to the right and to the rear as well. Uh, another angle showing the two properties that are under consideration. Uh, further round, these are the properties at the gate yard to the, uh, the gate yard entrance to the scheme. Uh, the officer's given me the site notice there, so we can see we did put a sign up for it. Uh, again, a closer up. Uh, diagram showing the red line. So these are the drawings that correspond with the property that has actually been built. Now the scenario here is that what is on site is not what was approved uh, by this council as part of the detailed planning application for this scheme. And what I'll do is I will show you in a second what was actually approved. Uh, this was highlighted to the council uh, when these uh, were built and the council has uh, been in discussion with the developer about how to rectify this issue. Hence, this planning application seeks to legitimise, if you like, for want of a better word, or regularise what is actually on the site. Otherwise, what is there does not have the benefit of planning permission. Uh, these are the proposed floor plans. When I say proposed, this is what is there on the site. Uh, this is the detailed development layout. There's no variation from the layout, but there certainly is a variation from the approved elevations. Uh, here are originally approved street scene. You can see this is the, the two properties in question. This is what they were originally uh, proposed to look like, and that was what was approved by this council. Here are uh, the detailed drawings that were approved by this council uh, showing the pair of semi-detached dwellings as were supposed to be built. But they weren't built like that. Uh, and what we have is this. But they are there, they are occupied, but they are clearly different to what was originally approved. If I point out the main differences to you, which are fairly obvious, I like to think, Obviously, the uh, levels of the two properties do not correspond with the, the one level of the properties that were originally approved. Uh, you have the barge board detailing here, uh, the moulded barge board detailing and finials uh, are not present on the scheme that's actually there. It's a much more basic, more simplified uh, version. Uh, you also have a central uh, chimney, a feature chimney, not a real chimney, uh, which clearly doesn't feature on the plans that are approved. And they have a, um, a brick, is that a line of dots? Yes, of course, yes, a, a, a different colour brick course through the centre, uh, which doesn't appear, and you also see on the ridge tiles are different as well along the top, so it is fundamentally different. Uh, this has been reported to the council. We've invited this planning application which seeks to regularise what is there. Uh, in approaching this, we have to approach it as if it's not there and would we approve planning permission for the development that is now shown on these plans. And uh, the view that the, the planning officers have taken in the context of uh, the local area and the character of the local area is notwithstanding the fact that this is very different and arguably not as attractive as what was permitted, uh, that it is not so bad as to withhold 
planning permission. So the recommendation is approval. Right. Thank you very much. Now we do have uh, speakers on this. Um, first call, uh, Mr. Alan Eldred. Welcome, sir. You've been here once or twice before, I seem to think, so you know you've got three minutes. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Alan Eldret and represent the Frinton Residents Association. This site development has caused a number of problems to local residents during its implementation, particularly when the vet developers have not always adhered to conditions made at the time of approval. There are still some outstanding issues, such as the condition of the Woodenwood Roadway itself and footways either side of it, which we assume will be rectified by the developer in line with Note 12 on their approved drawing Q941300A. Gary. The original plans for these houses had chimneys. The site development plan had a certain synergy in that the chimneys on the outside pairs of houses fronting Woodenwood Road, um, along with the two side pairs as you enter onto the site and the pair of houses front which actually are at the end of that entry road um, all had uh, chimneys which I think gave that synergy for the site. Um, the officer's report points out the significance of chimneys also on the houses opposite this development so I do not think you should, should or could dismiss the features on houses and the importance of chimneys which seems to have been done so. Sculptured finials on the roof and above some window areas, moulded scallop barge boards above some of the windows and gable ends are features that the officer has indicated on his report are embellishments due to this property's prominent road frontage location. That's point 16. This statement is wrong. All the properties on the development showed some of these features on their drawings mm. and all have been built without these features. The officer's report does not address this overall site problem. When comparing the dimensions of these houses on the old and new drawings, they are the same depth, but each is significantly narrower on the new plans. This particularly affects the room sizes and leaves one upstairs room too small to effectively have a normal single bed. It probably accounts, therefore, for them being changed from two to two-bedroom houses with, a with an office rather than the three-bedroom houses as was indicated and agreed to on all the original plans for this site. The officer's report states in 1.5 that all conditions were discharged before starting. However, before any occupation took place on this site, condition 2 of 14.1447 detail needed to be discharged. And I can't, can't find any reference to this on the website. This is one of the, the hard-fought conditions this committee obtained by deferring its original decision um, for further discussion of the developer. This retrospective application changes a number of details of the original approved dwellings, which not only results in smaller houses, but together with the lack of agreed features on the other properties, worsens the visual impact of the whole development. Designs that include such things as chimneys, sculptured finials on the roof, and some window areas, as scalloped barge boards around the windows, are the sort of features which can really enhance the development and give the quality we expected. I'm sure you could have imagined this on your site visit today. I can only conclude the builder has cheapened the development since getting the original approval and we have perhaps not been sufficiently diligent in enforcing his adherence to development plans. The development now has a reasonable high occupancy. I'm sure it will be a good location to live for the new Frinton residents. I just hope the developer has not let them down by downgrading other aspects of the property. I ask that you reject this application for the various reasons I've stated uh, and this perhaps can serve as a means for the developer rectifying some of these areas of non-adherence to the original agreed plans. Of course, it might send a message out to regarding other major developments in this area. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, now the ward member, Councillor Turner. Good evening, Chairman, fellow members, officers. This is a difficult and somewhat petty call-in. 
It is also a chance for you, the planning committee, to put a very large marker down on as to, as to how future large developments are going to be built in tendering. We have great developers and builders. One from Lawford comes to mind, then we have Persimmons. Now, to my knowledge, and I've never knowingly made my living at the expense of others and would be horrified if I was ever accused of doing so, this is not the case with the development in built-up areas. Thus, it behoves the developers to have care and consideration and attention to detail. We as councillors, and you in particular as members of the planning committee, spend a lot of time trying to act as the interface between the communities affected and allowing developers to develop. The development of this site has never been in question. In fact, Giles and me welcomed it. It is the last, last large green site available in Frinton, and thus having brought a needed diversity of new housing to our ward. The problem has been in the achievement of this. From what day one, I've had complaints. I have a string of emails, yards long in some cases, from affected residents, the town council and the planning department. Funnily enough, very, very few from Persimmons. Searching my emails, I find I have over 250. I have another 200 photos, all complaints all passed on to and partially dealt with by the planning department. The complaints run from men urinating in full view of the opposite residence, dirt, mud, potholes, I'll come back to that, TPO tree vandalised, parking, deliveries, road closed for three months while persimmons argued with angular water, flagrant disregard for most of the planning conditions, failure to interact with the locale and councillors except in a negative way. The final straw, and why I called this in, is that having given an understanding to the county councillor that the road would be made good after the completion of the development, they have now reneged on that. So much so that the gentleman's agreement twixt county highways and developers has now been ripped up. As far as I can see, this thuggery and bullying is for one reason only, to pay homage to the great god Mammon, one of the seven princes of hell. In simple terms, greed. Recently, in the financial press, uh, the 135 top managers of Persimmons are due a £600 million payout. The CEO is in line for £112 million of that this year alone. What chance have we got against this tsunami of money? Very little in my summation. We play by different rules. We are reasonable, understanding, outgoing and positive. I would hate this authority to be anything else. I have worked too long, too hard in helping to achieve our present attitude to lose that over one developer who chooses not to play by the rules. This is our chance to stop the bullying. As a little boy, my father always told me to punch bullies on the nose. It wasn't until I was in my 20s I realised I couldn't reach their noses. Well, now I can, and maybe we can, if this committee agrees to refusal on this application. The arbitrary change of plans on the bookends of these semis, the Hanbury TF and now built as a Hanbury A, this changes the whole elevation and look of the development. That was the main reason for the two-month delay in granting the original detailed planning to get the frontage so that it did not dominate and overlook too much of the existing street scene. I could go on at length as to the details that have flagrantly been ignored or were still never going to be added. Scallop finials, barge boards, chimneys, the quality of the work. I gather from anecdotal evidence I've heard that they've even found stairs not properly fixed. The cynicism makes a mockery of our authority and worse still just adds to the deep distrust that governments of all shapes and sizes are held in. We do have the tools in our lockers to refuse. Yes, it will be difficult. Yes, it will be advised against. Yes, it may well be expensive. All of the above and probably more. The Environmental Agency just recently fined Thames Water £20 million for illegal discharges into watercourses. The whole of the water industry is now sitting up with focused minds. The committee is a brave one and has stood up and fought for its citizens. It has refused many applications it doesn't think suitable. The fact that government thinks otherwise in most cases does not dist distract from the point that you as a committee did the right thing. This helps make politics meaningful in tendering. For all the foregoing and as a point of principle that if you receive permission to build then you are duty bound to build as per the joint agreement Thus, I am still of the mind that it should be refused and that enforcement should follow. Thank you for listening to me, and sorry our paths failed to cross this morning. I was there. Thank you. Right, and now um, uh, Stuart McAdam, who is uh, the 
agent or their representative, I think, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Committee for the opportunity to address you. My name is Stuart McAdam. I'm a senior planner with Persimmon Homes. Plots 1 and 2 Whittenwood Road form part of the development of 37 residential properties with associated gar garages, roads and car parking, landscaping and public open space, which was granted outline plan permission on the 30th of June 2014. Reserve matters were approved on 23rd of March 2015. The development comprises a mixture of residential dwelling types consisting of two, three and four bedroom houses. The proposal before members seeks to regularise the design of plots 1 and 2, 14F and 14G, Whittenwood Road, which Persimmon Homes acknowledges differ from that approved under the reserve matters. Persimmon Homes has previously sought to address the situation by means of an amendment to the approved details, but had been advised that a fresh application is the appropriate route to regularise the matter. Persimmon Homes very much regrets the unfortunate set of circumstances that has led to the houses not being built in accordance with the approved plans, and will take steps to ensure that this does not happen again. The, the application therefore seeks to address the situation by proposing an amendment to the form of the Hanbury house type prevalent within the approved development, both as semi-detached and as a terrace unit. The footprint and layout of the dwellings, with some minor, inter minor internal alterations to partition walls, as well as the parking arrangement, remains as approved. The overall design, as members will note from the officer's presentation, is also largely the same as that approved. The key differences relate to a split ridge due to the difference in levels, the absence of chimneys and a simple tiled edge rather than an elaborate barge board and finials on the pitch roof details above the first floor windows. The levels across the site, including the finished floor levels of these two houses as built, has been agreed following the submission of details to address condition 14 of the outline application. This is highlighted in paragraph 612 of your officer's report. As a result of the agreed site levels, the houses could not have been constructed without a step up. It would have been difficult to incorporate a chimney on these plots as it would be constructed over the split level. Furthermore, aesthetically, it would be difficult to achieve a satisfactory design and could, in fact, make the change in levels more profound. Whilst it is acknowledged that plot 34 to 37 fronting Whittenwood Road are of a similar appearance and include chimneys, the remaining Hanbury house types within the development do not incorporate chimneys, nor do the adjacent new units at the entrance to the development. With regards to the approved pitch roof detailing and finials above the first floor windows, such, de such detailing is not pre prevalent within the area, nor is it incorporated into the design of either the adjacent detached houses, the houses at plots 34 to 37 fronting Whittenwood Road, or the Hanbury house types within the development. However, a pitch roof is retained, albeit the ornate barge boarding and finials have not been incorporated into the design. The proposed amendments indicated on the drawings before you demonstrate that plots one and two are largely in, in accordance with the approved details, with the exception of the detailing features as discussed. The scale and massing remain the same, and the elevations retain the soldier course brick sills lintels, porches and pitch detail above the first floor windows, albeit not so elaborate. Whilst the changes for which we seek permission are different to that approved, the overall design is not significantly different. Furthermore, the application site is not within a sensitive area, such as a conservation area, nor is it in the proximity of listed buildings, where a higher degree of design might be more appropriate. Overall, the design is in keeping with the character and appearance of the locality, and the dwellings maintain the rhythm and appearance of the street scene. A number of comments have been made on issues outside the remit of this proposal, which as members, which as members will be aware must be assessed on its own merits. However, these points are duly noted and acknowledged, and I'll take these back to the office with me. Turning to the proposal before members, I welcome the positive officer recommendation, and I hope that members can approve the application. 
Thank you for allowing me to address you this evening. Thank you very much, sir. You did overrun your time, but it is a very serious uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, and to that end, I'm going to ask uh, Mrs Hastings, uh, Head of Governance, whether she'd like to make a comment first at this stage. Um, I'll probably um, ask to comment, if I may, um, whilst the debate's going on. I have a feeling that members are going to be um, quite... Um, they are going to treat this matter quite seriously. The only thing I want to say at this stage, before you go into any debate, is to bear in mind that this isn't an enforcement matter. Um, it is um, a determining a planning application before you. Um, I can um, reasonably foresee that members um, could want to talk about enforcement. You know, it, it, we've already said it's different to what was approved before, but this is a determining a planning application. The reason I'm making that um, uh, difference um, at this stage is because if you was making an enforcement decision, you would be taking different matters into account of information of which you haven't got before you. Um, we also would be doing enforcement matters in Part B. So you know there is a, a process that we would need to follow. So I just want to make that point at this stage. I might be completely off kilter and you're not going to mention that at all, but I think I know you all quite well enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Mr Guyver. I have no comments at this stage. No comments at this stage. In that case, um, yes, I'm going to call on uh, Councillor Heaney and then I'll go to Councillor Bacon. It's a great pity that Persimmon has a corporate strategy which allows it to sell houses to innocent members of the public, which, because they've changed the design so much, they have no planning permission. I was very much involved in the, the, the talks about this, the pre-planning, and I remember one of the directors, or the original design that came in, was very plain, um, le less plain, I have to say, than this design that's been built. I've been around this today. The director himself, when we said the whole thing is too plain, suggested having barge boards. There's not a barge board on any of those houses. They should have been on lots of them. They were going to have brick courses through them to just to break up the plainness of them. Um, it's not a sign of that. They've got sort of spotty bricks all over them. Um, obviously, somebody didn't notice that the, the levels were different, but you can incorporate that. You don't have to leave off the finials, the chimney. You could, if you put the chimneys, you could have two chimneys either end. Or This is a very basic design. The other thing... Um, we noticed today, when we were looking, the road drains are totally blocked with cement and rubble. What sort of company leaves the road drains like that? There could have been a major flood on that road, which would have flooded onto the houses in, in front. I mean, it's just extraordinary. You know, they haven't even... What was the point of having pre-planning, where all these things are discussed, they're all agreed on, and then the company just takes absolutely no notice about what they've agreed, they put in for planning. They just, your, I believe Persimmon is coming in with large developments around here. Do they actually think that the planning committee is not going to remember this debacle? Thank you. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there's a couple of... Um, things in the officer's report that worry me slightly. Um, 612, which was um, referred to by the, the, the gentleman from Persimmon, um, the, the discharge, condition 14, um, which, which I actually dug out and looked up. And I looked at the, the condition that was discharged on the 14th of April 2015, and it's got roof levels agreed by virtue of successful discharge of condition 14 which related to site levels. There are three documents with regard to that, um, one of them being Q941-330 Rev A. I know it's very sad that I've written that down, but when it showed the level of plot one and plot two, there's a slight difference in the height. Where do we stand with regard to if that condition has been discharged, 
then surely any decision we make now is superfluous, really. We've, been, we've got a fait accompli. The condition's been discharged, so that means the condition has been complied with, yet we're now being asked to regularise something that has already been agreed by an officer. So I'd just like to know where we stand with regard to that, please. Okay, well, in terms of the uh, levels being discharged as a condition, that still doesn't negate the need for the scheme to comply with approved plans. What should have happened is that uh, before these were built, any amendment, any necessary amendment to the design should have been applied for then. Uh, but you will see from the scheme that the differences don't apply just to the ridge heights on these properties. They're more extensive. They relate also to the detailing uh, as well. Uh, so although we do have a, a site level uh, condition which has been discharged, which may well have led to a different development actually being built, uh, the process should have been that any amendments were applied for before the development was built rather than the developer going ahead and building them as they have. Just follow up, Councillor um, Baker. One of the questions I asked the officer that escorted us this morning, I don't know if you've got the answer, is when, was plot, when were plot one and two done? Because if they were doing it at the very beginning, then they must have realised then um, that they weren't going to be complied with and I would have thought that they would have come back straight away. Um, maybe that's not a planning consideration, but it, it might influence the way I think on it, really. If, if it's the very end, then uh, again. No, it was an early stage of the development that these were put in. Can I come back? All right. Councillor Heaney. Um, one thing I forgot to say, because of the lack of barge boards, finials and anything else on this development, which were lines of bricks, I'm quite sure a lot of other houses on that development don't have planning permission as well. Well, I think as Mrs Hastings uh, mentioned earlier, it's for the committee to decide how we treat uh, this particular application to regularise it. Uh, any wider concerns about enforcement can be dealt with separately. Councillor Everett. Uh, um, looking at the particular application in front of us, um, the details that we're looking at that were different to the original application, um, in your view as an officer, um, would you say that this accords with the existing street scene um, in Whitton Wood Road um, with this particular application, or does it differ from that? Well, I'm not the case officer that dealt with the detail of it, but my understanding of Whittemwood Road is you do have a mixture of eras and designs within that area. So to actually pick out a specific design and say that the development should conform to that is quite difficult in loca this location. What we do have is a design which in the officer's recommendation is acceptable for the area, acknowledging it's not as attractive as what should have been built, uh, but the recommendation that is, is acceptable for that location. Thanks. Councillor Benson and then Councillor Fairley. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, my, I'm, I'm quite concerned that if we... Um, do approve uh, as per the officer's recommendations that we are setting a precedent for future develop developers um, who will come along and promise all these wonderful houses with finials and barge boards and chimneys etc thinking well it doesn't matter um, we can just build a square box and get away with it because if persimmon homes can do it we can do it so I'm, I'm very concerned that if we do go along these these lines um, will be leading ourselves wide open and what's the point of having a planning committee if things that we approve aren't then adhered to okay. All right. uh, Councillor Fairley thank you um, various points to make um, if I may 
6.13 um, states the proposal is to retain the dwellings in their as-built form, which is basically the same house type as approved. When you say basically the same, is it basically the same? Is that a subjective opinion or is it different is my first question. Well, the type of house uh, is similar, but clearly the appearance of it is very different. Thank you. Um, 6.14, the, the change finish floor level has been approved under condition discharge approval of levels and the step in the ridge and eaves line would have been necessary in any event, even if the dwellings had been built as per the original, the original approval. Why would they have been necessary in any event? Well, the, on undertaking the, the full survey and then submitting the information to discharge a level of condition, they've clearly discovered <coughs> that building it in the approved form, uh, they wouldn't be able to do based on the levels uh, of the site. But what should have happened is that at that stage, on discovery that they couldn't do that, uh, what they should ought to have done is apply at that stage to vary the plan. Uh, I think the change in the ridge, ridge height, the difference in ridge height, is practically unavoidable, but certainly uh, there's no real reason why some of the detailing shouldn't have gone on there. Thank you. I'm not a ground worksman or a, a structural engineer of any description, but you see um, many situations where ground levels are altered in some way to maintain um, what basically has been approved in this case and that hasn't happened. Um, would your expectation be that the developer would come back to you if they had realised a problem such as this? Well, in my general experience of developers, normally if they see that they can't practically achieve something for whatever reason, they normally do come back and uh, seek advice on how to uh, get amendments at the appropriate time. I've got a few more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 6.15, the issue to consider is whether the minor changes to the dwellings erected on these two plots are acceptable in visual terms. Um, is there a set criteria for what you may class as minor changes? There's a, an element of subjectivity in making that judgment. May I leave it there for the moment, please, Chairman? <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to come back, though. Go for it. Thank you, and I'd like to uh, pick up on the first of Councillor Fairley's uh, points. Um, if the levels on the ground um, were sufficiently different to, as you say, force the stepped approach, why would it not have been possible for the, for the levels to be taken down rather than pushed up um, by simply excavating? I just don't know the answer, Councillor Everett. I don't know the answer why that avenue wasn't explored at the time. I just don't have that information for you. Spend me money. So, so thank you. So that means actually they could have been built as originally um, planned. I'm not saying a definite yes. I'm just saying I don't know. <laughs> I think the first point that um, councillor, councillor, um, sorry, Gary Cover, um made was that when the problem was discovered, there should have been dialogue at that stage. So whether it could have gone up or down or sideways or whatever, there should have been the dialogue. Right. I'm going to just put two pennies in before I let councillor Fairley come back. I wasn't sitting in the seat when they went through. My, my colleague was chairman. But I do remember a whole series of meetings, and the mm. one she referred to 
with the director of Persimmons East Anglia, where he gave us this assurance following our requests that at least the properties in the front row should have a bit of character and they should all fit in nicely. The ones further back might be, uh, I'll describe them as plainer, but he did give us that undertaking that that should happen. Um, I can well remember that one. Councillor Fairley. Thank you. Um, having visited the site today, what struck me overall was actually poor quality and what appeared to be shoddy workmanship, which is basically, I would assume, cost cutting. Um, so if this hasn't been followed, it does raise a question for what else hasn't been followed at this development. And I would like us to, in some way, um, consider what recourse is available. Is there, is there a way that we can initiate an audit of this particular site, for example? Um, I understand that's not what we're looking at the moment, but I'm asking the question whether it's possible for us to organize that in some way. Um, it's already been said the main strains we've noted were full of cement and tarmac. Grass and weeds are already growing through hard surfaces and basically it was a shocking overall finish. But this particular property that we're looking at tonight is in my view materially different from that originally submitted and it results in what I consider to be an unacceptable move away from the original design in terms of character compared to the intended character for which approval was given and which included specified features. Visual acceptability is subjective and in my view the changes are not minor. My perception of visiting that site today is that it represented, if you like, looking around a journey from the old character cottages directly opposite to the present day with all the properties facing the road having attractive features, whether they're chimneys, finials, cladding, mm -hmm. and failure to include these features as per the approved plans alters this journey from old through to new and impacts ne negatively on the intended character. The result looks cheap and lacklustre. There has been plenty of opportunity to raise the issues or development problems with the planning department, but this has not been done. It does represent a deviation of planning control, and for those reasons, I would like to refuse this tonight, please. And I'd like to second that. Right, well, I've got a list of speakers <laughs> still, but... Uh, I'll let me just take my speakers first, and yeah. then I'll and come Ms. to you Benson, before, before, we go to the vote. before we go to the vote. Ms. Right. Benson first, yes. then Oprah. Councillor Benson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, going back to the chimney stacks, 616 um, states they are not working chimneys, as we know, and are built off the party wall, and there is no technical reasons why the stacks could not be provided although there would have been additional lead work due to the level changes. So why, can, why have they not been, if, if there is no um, reason, technical reason why they can't be, couldn't have been provided, um, is there any reason why they can't be addressed now and these, these changes added to the houses, even though they're occupied, it wouldn't be any disruption to the occupants, surely, or would it? Right, oh. Councillor Baker? I have great difficulty with this. I'd just like to know if we are minded, well, there's a recommendation for refusal. I know our legal advisor has suggested and said that we shouldn't consider um, enforcement, but if we say no, what happens next? May I ask you a couple of other questions that have come through? Yeah, I think it's the best time to take those now. Okay. Um, if... If the vote was to go in favour of refusal, then my advice would be to you that you wouldn't go on to discussing any enforcement action because, as I pointed out earlier, you would need, when we take any type, when, we, when as a council you are considering any type of enforcement action, there is a certain criteria that you have to take into account. So, as members, you would need that information before you 
to make that decision. There's, an, um, you know, there's different pieces of legislation. You have to take into account human rights. You have to take into harm assessment. You know, all of those things. So if you was to comment on enforcement tonight, then you would be making that without all of that information. I'm not saying you couldn't make that decision at a later date, but not tonight, because you haven't got that information before you. Um, I'd just go back on the question that Councillor Fairley asked earlier about um, almost an audit of the development. Um, this planning committee's terms of reference include determining planning applications, um, conservation matters, um, a couple of other things, but also enforcement. Um, I would probably suggest um, um, a way to do it. As pl a planning committee, you quite often have your planning committee briefings with officers on specific topics. You know, you've done that before. I, you know, I would suggest that you request one of those um, to understand um, relevant parts of the process that you've highlighted tonight. Um, and also how that fits in with any potential enforcement action. I'm not saying it does fit in with enforcement action, but I think as a committee it would be worthwhile you having that type of session. If as a result of that informal session as a planning committee, you've still got concerns, then we could look at what would be the appropriate action to take at that, that relevant time. But you are more than within your rights to request a briefing with officers to look at a spe specified topic. Thank you. Yes, Councillor. Picking up on that point, um, if we were minded to refuse this application, could we make a recommendation behind that inviting officers to investigate and to bring back to this committee other options for us to consider. In other words, enforcement. I mean, if the committee is minded to go down the line of refusal uh, and that is the decision that is taken, uh, naturally the applicant could appeal against that. Uh, and then the decision is in the hands of the Secretary of State and the Planning Inspectorate. And uh, bearing in mind that we have properties here that are occupied, uh, now that is a, has a bearing on how the Secretary of State might consider this. Uh, to keep it within our control, this is only a suggestion for the committee, but if we are not minded to approve, uh, one suggestion could be a deferment to allow us to actually speak to the developer and see if there's anything that they can do retrospectively uh, to introduce some of the detailing to this property. And if they can't do that, then we bring it back and we refuse it then, or come to, if, we, if we're not happy with the solution that's been come to. The concern is if we refuse it tonight, it goes into the hands of the planning inspector and we lose control. It, uh, before you vote on it, it, it is quite serious, as has just been said, that these places have certainly been sold, whether they've both been occupied now, I don't know. But it brings into account, you know, what do their investigating people who do the searches? Uh, because they've apparently bought a house which doesn't have planning permission. Um, and, uh, and it is Council quite Bailey. serious. Councillor Bailey. If we were minded to follow that advice, what trust and reassurance can we have in terms of our conversations with the developers no, who no haven't at this point had the, well, they just haven't followed the process. They haven't played ball. Why should we trust them at this point? Well, I can't advise on whether you trust the developer or not, but you've heard from Mr. McAdam uh, today that he's, he too takes these points very seriously, uh, and I think it's worth a go. Hmm. Can I 
Yes, go on. Um, the other thing as well, before you go to the vote, I think it would be useful if we could just recap on what the reasons for refusal are so that we're not confusing reasons with refusal with regards to the level of feeling towards the developer. Fairly. Right, Councillor Fairly. If I could then recap on my <laughs> reasons yes, that I yes. recommended yes, refusal. Yes. Um, and we are looking at this in terms of if this application had come before us prior to it having been built. The property is materially different from that originally submitted and approved and it results in an unacceptable move away from the original design in terms of character compared to what we actually approved and therefore based on that I don't feel that this property fits in with the character and the journey from old through to new that is represented by the neighbouring properties along the road. Right. Um, is that the seconder's view yes. as well? It is. So. Jerry, did you hear that? Oh, Could you summarise for yeah. me, please? Yeah. <laughs> Everett, Everett. Um, yeah. Councillor um, Fairley was proposing the reasons for refusal would be, and I'm going to summarise and paraphrase. Um, was that they, the design is materially different to that which has been before the committee before, which I would say is not a reason. Um, it is unacceptable in design and character, which is one that could be explored. Um, and it doesn't fit in with the character um, of the neighbouring properties, which again, I think is another one which is subjective but the first one with regards to being different to one proved before, we would have to look at this application on its own merits. Yes, no, I agree with your advice, Lisa. Thanks. <laughs> 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 right. Has Everett and Benson come on to speak? Right, we'll take two more. Yes, Councillor Everett to start with, then Councillor Benson. I'd just like to reiterate that it is about the, the nature of it be not being of the character of the area this application before us is not in the nature of the character of the area that is important here. Yeah. Councillor Benison. Thank you. Um, can you just clarify um, whether we stand more chance of getting these rectifications if we go for a deferment or is there a danger that we go, it, it's then if we refuse it, it would go to the um, inspector and um, can you just point us in the right direction as to which would be the safer option for us? Well, bearing in mind that the properties are there uh, already, uh, I think my professional advice to you uh, is that if you defer to allow officers the opportunity to explore with the developer what can be done retrospectively through a revised plan. We may even explore whether there's any sort of legal uh, means in which we can uh, require them to do that work within a fixed period of time as well. We can also explore that. I'm not going to go into the details now, but that is something we could explore. And if those discussions fail, uh, naturally, uh, we would bring it back. Uh, if we get a revised drawing, I think we would probably bring it back to the committee for its approval or otherwise. The, the refusing it here and now, I fear, will just put it into the hands of the planning inspectorate. And I think there could be, I'm not saying there definitely will be, there could be something we might be able to do with the developer to make it closer to what was originally approved uh, and better than what's there at the moment. Councillor Fairley. 
if unable to reach agreement, does it come back here again for consideration? I would say it does, and uh, I'm just thinking about time scales for bringing it back, giving a set period of time to come back with. Otherwise, it could just sit there indefinitely. Yes, I mean, in terms of non-determination, it runs out uh, on the 26th of May, I believe. Uh, if the developer is willing to negotiate with us, I'm sure they will e accept an extension of time to allow these uh, negotiations to take place. Uh, and I might be minded to suggest that we bring it back to committee within two cycles. So not to necessarily to the next one. It'd be great if we could bring something back to the next one, but if to be on the safe side to allow time, if we bring something back in two cycles, and if we still don't like it, we refuse then. July. Can I, can I say something quickly? Yes, I'm just looking at the proposer at the present moment to see whether she wanted to revise her proposal or not. I'm concerned that uh, if we do not determine that the developer wouldn't be as fair playing as you would imagine them or would expect them to be. They haven't um, played by the rules thus far. Um, I think that's dangerous. Is there any opportunity to have perhaps, I don't know, an extra meeting prior to the 26th and it all getting done before the 26th? Is that realistic? Is that not realistic? I don't think that's realistic unless you're delegating authority to the officers to grant permission, but I, I don't think you're doing that. I think you want to be the, the ones that make this decision, don't you? Uh, so I will speak to the developer, see if we can agree an extension of time. I would like to think uh, that we will agree an extension of time to look at this. Of course, if we don't, will be in the same position of it going to appeal against non-determination, uh, in which case we would come back to you, inform you that that has happened, and ask for your reasons for refusal, which I'd yeah. expect to be along the lines of the ones that have just been mentioned. Two cycles means, just to remind you, it would be Tuesday the 11th of July, would be the next one. Councillor Fairley? If we are able to get a guarantee that the date will be extended for discussions. I would take back the refusal for recommendation in favour of deferral for those conversations, but not unless there is a guarantee that the date will be extended. Janet, can I just have a moment to keep the journal? Yes, please. Yes. Can I actually say something? <coughs> oh, well, I want, I want to actually ask Gary a question, so I'll wait till he's finished. Yeah. I don't know. I've never seen a worse town in my entire life. Yeah. Those yeah. drains are just unbelievable. Yeah. Question. Does he want to? Uh, I think he's going to phone base and find out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in problems with my officers at the present moment. But Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, you've gathered that, Gary, have you? Um, Is that Mr. the... Uh, Mr. McAdam's gone out to make a phone call. Can I just ask a question? Gary? Yes, all right. Um, I was going to ask, when it, say we did defer it, or he agrees, he's obviously asking someone, um, and it comes back uh, and he says yes and they agree to change it. I hope the drawings of what it's going to be changed to would come back on the 11th of July. Would they? Be? So we could look at it. Did you? Uh, sorry, is that is that? that that's the intention, yes. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Uh, 
it, sure. uh, if we haven't got anything ready for that period of time, we'll come back to you and report to you that we've, we haven't managed to agree something. One of the, um, trying to work a way that we get a de decision tonight which gets you the clarity as well, um, the insurance that you're, assurance, sorry, that you're seeking. You could have a decision which was almost two-pronged, which is um, the committee um, would like officers to work with the developers to get an extension of time um, to raise, to s resolve the concerns that the committee has raised because um, obviously that expires on the 26th of May or something. Um, but then if that doesn't happen, you know, it would be in the same resolution tonight. If that didn't happen, then you give delegated authority to the officers to refuse on the basis of the reasons you've said tonight. Yeah. That sounds reasonable. I think we will, while uh, Mr McAdam makes his phone call, uh, we'll just defer for five minutes, give him a chance to come back. I mean, if he, if he comes back and says they're not prepared to defer, then we go to a decision, and it's as simple as that. Is that yes? I don't think the Senate committee would be but I thought it was so pricey. The more suggesting all these lovely things, I suggested the rows of brick just to make them look more interesting. They suggest all the barge board and the finials and stuff. Yes. God almighty. Yes. What a shower they are, actually. Yes, yes. All right. At least it might expire a rocket across their bows to say that you don't behave like this in Joey. Yes, <coughs> that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. It really was a shoddy development, actually. said it was all built by Albanians. <laughs>
uh, to provide some uh, guidance as to specifically what is unacceptable about what is here and specifically what we could uh, expect to see from a, an improved scheme. Thank you, Chairman. You haven't got your microphone on. Oh, you have now. Um, in terms of that design, I don't know whether it is just us who are stakeholders in that, and I think that needs discussing amongst those that need to feed into it. Um, and therefore, <coughs> I think we should go down the route of deferring until such until the 26th, but between now and the 26th, whatever conversations have been had in terms of what the appropriate changes would be, I'd say put it all back to exactly as it was on the approved plans. But mm. then, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I think that may be unreasonable, bearing in mind that there's people living in those properties. So my want would be to say put it back exactly as per the planning um, application that was approved would be what I would say at this point but if you want to be able to have those discussions prior to the 26th and confirm them to the developer prior to the 26th then that's the way forward I would go with it. Councillor Holmes? Yeah I was looking at the first one. Oh. Microphone. Yeah. Yeah, can I go back? That's it. Uh, yep that's the one. Um, the uh, windows at the top there, the two windows that are actually coming out of the roof. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that it would make a difference if all of the um, the actual sh yeah uh, cladding, barge boards, barge barge boards cladding, Stop. was um, done like that. Is there the shell? I think that would make a difference. But there was a picture where you could just see the, the end of the other one, couldn't you? Just see the end of the next door. That's it. Sorry. Chairman, with your indulgence, could I perhaps offer some advice? Uh, I mean, I've got in front of me here uh, Mr Eldret's representation, uh, which actually highlights uh, quite specifically some of the areas that he was concerned about, and I'm sure are concerns shared by members of the committee. Uh, and specifically, it is uh, the fact that the development as built does not have any form of ornamental chimney. So I think that could be one thing that we would want the developer to come back to us to see what they can do. Uh, obviously the, uh, the moulded uh, barge boards are very different uh, from what was on the original permitted plan. So we would want them to explore a revised amendment to those. Uh, and the uh, the finials on the uh, on the gables, we could have get them to look at that as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I mean, is, let's have a look. What was else mentioned? Windows and gable ends. Uh, so it's really the barge boards above the windows and the chimneys and the, the finials, which are the main things. What I don't think we can reasonably expect to change is the uh, ridge heights of the properties, yeah. uh, particularly as these properties are occupied uh, now. We will, we will ask the developer to look at chimneys, and they may come back with a, a one-chimney solution or a double-chimney solution. Then it will be at your discretion whether you accept that or not. Can I add within that, um, 
and I don't know how difficult this is, um, but the lintel details are in a lighter colour in the plans here, whereas in the built version they are made of the same colour brick as the rest of the dwelling. Um, that makes quite a difference to the appearance and is also in character with other houses in the street scene. So these are the... Is this house smaller than the original one? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a... I can't make it bigger, but it's obviously... Can we just go to back what it is now, again? Oh, yeah. N um, how much smaller is it than, than it was before? I mean, the windows, obviously, I think we had bigger windows before, didn't we, upstairs? Looks like a... And I wonder if all of the buildings on this site are smaller than they should have been. I suspect that that's the case. I mean, it'd be very nice if we could audit the whole site as somebody suggested, because it's obviously built, been built totally um, against all the plans that went through. Yes. Yeah, yes, they are smaller. I, I fear that enlarging the properties perhaps goes beyond no, what we could reasonably expect through that, a revision. But I was just checking on them. Uh, and in terms of what indiscretions they may be on the rest of the estate. I think Mrs. Uh, Hastings' advice earlier on about how we deal with enforcement and that kind of thing stands. I was just going to say, I was presume they've got their work cut out because people do live in them at the moment, don't they? So they really have got to do some work to sort this little lot out, I'm afraid. Well, the, uh, the properties, yes, they've been transferred into private ownership now, uh, but of course there is, they currently do not have planning permission in their current form, so of course the occupiers have a right to expect their property that they live in to have planning permission. One wonders what sister they were advised to go to. <laughs> Councillor Heaney, I don't think we'll go down that route. <laughs> So yeah. should I summarise in terms of the features uh, that have been Benison, identified? Oh. Yeah. Councillor Benison. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, presumably all the people who have bought these houses um, bought them off plan and looked at the specifications and so they have bought them in good faith and haven't got what they've paid for. And I wonder whether we ought to have tighter um, controls in future when we give permission to these developers and they've obviously just gone and built them willy-nilly without any concern about the permission they've been given um, and for, for it to get to this stage where all these houses have been built undersized and without their um, um, twiddly bits added um, all the all the enhancements and chimneys and whatever um, they've obviously we sorry we don't know those details, know those details but um, it just begs the question how they've managed to get away with this? Well, uh, there is a, uh, must be an answer for that, but uh, I'm not sure that Twiddly Bits complies with any architectural rules, but not to worry. Yeah. Councillor Holmes? Yeah, I was, I was just oh, saying to Liz, you know, we are actually here for two, and we do know, as just been told, that them two are undersized, but that does not nothing to do with the rest of the site nothing at all to do with the rest of the site so we are talking about two specific houses we are. Yeah. I mean if the the owners of the other houses have got a problem it's up to them to bring it up we need to know about these two thank you right uh, Mr Guyver have you got sufficient things points to bring up in discussions okay well from my list I've compiled so far uh, we've got uh, the chimneys uh, we've got barge boards, we've got uh, all window lintels, 
uh, and the decorative finials. Uh, and the suggestion is that they are elements of this current design which are unacceptable uh, to the council and that we invite uh, the applicant to provide revised details uh, for us to consider if they're acceptable within two cycles of the planning cycle, committee. Yes. Well, I, I think there needs to be a sensible time limit on it, otherwise it may well never come back. Uh, so I think uh, to put a time limit on it, I, I would suggest two cycles. I think one might be pushing it a bit. Mr McAdam has obviously got to uh, speak to his architects and to his team, uh, so I would tend to give two months for that. Can I, can I ask another question, Bert? Yeah, yes, one from Councillor Heaney, and then I'm going back to Councillor Fairley. So if the developer doesn't come forward with these improvements and, and suggestions of things he could do, then it falls back to Councillor Fairley's um, resolution, and you would just enact that. If uh, the developer uh, doesn't agree to an extension of time, to allow these negotiations, then we will act upon uh, what has been suggested as reasons for refusal and we will refuse the application. Uh, if they do enter into an extension of time, which I'm hoping I've, we've given Mr McAdams enough guidance as to what we would expect to see, uh, then in two cycles, we will either bring back a revised plan for your consideration or we will advise you that we haven't managed to succeed in that uh, and you may wish to reconsider your recommendation at that point. Right, Councillor Fairley. Based on what he just said, <laughs> <laughs> I would like therefore to withdraw my move to refuse and move to defer this based on all of those things. It has an agreement prior to the 26th that it's going to be elongated and come back to committee for, was it July 11th? Yeah. And I'd agree with that. To including all the right. detail for... Yeah. Okay. And then the second part of that would be that if the agreement was not reached for the extension of time, that office delegated authority to be given to officers to refuse on the reasons that you summarised earlier, which was unacceptable design and character, fitting in with the character in the area and neighbouring properties. Right, I'm going to call it to a halt at that point. Um, so you now know what the proposal is, um, and I have a seconder for that proposal. Those in favour, exactly as it's just been discussed, please show. And I'll add to that, so it will be unanimous. Yes, yes to defer. And yep. Right. Uh, thank you for that. I think that brings us to the end of the agenda. And um, thank you for your time. 20 past eight for the completion. Thank you all very much. Um, just to members of the committee, uh, you will have in front of you the uh, slightly, very slightly revised public speaking scheme, the planning committee protocol. Take it and you will uh, read it, I'm sure, and find that um, it doesn't vary at all. I haven't been sticking and I don't think my predecessor has either. I don't think we've been sticking to the rules up until now. No, um, not. It <laughs> was uh, <laughs> brought to our attention over Councillor Everett, who stressed the point to us, and he was right. Um, the application uh, was, it used to read that a member of the public who wishes to, bring it to speak in favour of the officer's recommendation. Well, we've never treated it that way. We've said people can speak for and against the application, not the officer's, or, or the officer's recommendation. Mm -hmm. So we have put that right now. So that's that. And also, um, 
there should be a copy for you, yeah, I, I think, uh, of the actual training that uh, sessions that we've had mm. so far. And take it from the floor to uh, the proposal tonight that we would like to have one now definitely Sorry, on yeah. enforcement. Um, to, yes, determining the applications. Are we able to make that just the planning committee? Um, these others, we haven't limited to the planning committee. We've opened it to anybody else. Um, <coughs> Could, um, Chairman, can I just suggest, and it is only my suggestion, and you can shoot me down in flames if you want me to, if you want to, um, is that for this particular item, it might be just relevant to have a small group with the planning committee. I think it's going to be quite complex. And I also think you don't want to start throwing in other issues. I think you just, you, you've raised concerns which are very specific. And I think you can always have another session with the um, wider audience. But I think for the first time on this one, it should be just the planning committee. But that's my suggestion. That seems to be getting nodding all the way around. So. Uh, Yep, we'll let you know. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Good. In that case, thank you all very much. Well chaired, John. Well chaired. Well chaired. It's not fun when you think that something's coming up that you don't like. There's going to be a problem. Sorry, there aren't many times I can see it.